Hey everybody, it's your old pal Chuck, and I'm back with another review. And today, we are continuing our look at the Transformers Kingdom line with the Wave 2 core class figures. This is Starscream and Megatron. And I have to tell you, um, right off the bat, one thing I want to mention is Starscream is, um, uh, Starscream, Megatron is a lot darker in hand than the original uh, prototype images or the photo images showed. Um, it's hard to tell in tank mode, but like right here, this darker, um, very dark gunmetal gray was always shown as a brighter silver that sort of matches the rest of the robot mode. I mean, we'll get into it more when we uh, take a look at the robot mode. Now, in terms of where you can get these figures, um, they are sh sort of showing up in um, brick and mortar retail now. In terms of online distributors, as far as I know, nobody's shipping them out yet. I got them from my private dealer, um, who I know on Facebook. And uh, so that's about it for the overview. We'll pause, we'll take a closer look at and the transformation of Starscream. Okay, so we're going to start off with Starscream, as I mentioned, and let me just say right off the bat, for those of you that were expecting a downsized version of the Earthrise Voyager mold, yeah, really, uh, I had to say mistaken, there's a lot of unique engineering going on with this figure that just blew my mind. Um, the best way I can explain it for long-time collectors is the amount of engineering and the quality of the engineering is comparable to Prime, Robots in Disguise, Cyberverse, Legion class, Cliff Jumper. If you remember uh, that figure, that was basically a Legion figure, which is about this tall, featuring um, the full articulation of a deluxe or larger figure. And while I wouldn't say this has that full level of articulation because the ankles are fused in an A stance, the engineering is there. Um, what I thought would be a fun thing to do is give you um, a comparison to the last time the Seeker Mold was in this size. And here is Skywarp from Titan's Return. Now, Skywarp is a repaint of Starscream from the uh, Thrilling 30 line, whereas that version of Starscream was released as a Target Master with Waspinator. It was the layers and layers of homages in that line. Uh, was quite interesting, especially if you watch uh, Beast Wars and know the connection between Starscream and Waspinator. But as you can see, they're roughly the same size. Um, this is based on a newer look for the Seekers. I think it was like a different, I want to say not the F-14, like the F-17 okay. or something. We'll see it more in uh, uh, vehicle mode. By the way, I do want to mention for any of you who might have these, and at first I was very concerned because I thought the backpack had become very floppy there's actually a little groove here on the hinge right by where my finger is and instead of just folding the wing up all the way if you flip it over that hinge it actually holds it quite well other than that this figure has held up quite nicely the ball joints and the shoulders and the hips might be a touch looser than they were but it's not uh anything that you would normally expect. Getting back to Starscream, he has ball joints in the shoulders, ball joints in the elbows, ball joint in the hip, ball joint in the knee. As I mentioned, the ankles are fused in that A stance position. He also has a swivel for the head, which is mostly for transformation because once in robot mode, if you have the big fingers like I do, it's very hard to get in. Uh, one thing I do like is the wings do have a little bit of play, so you can get them out of the way if you want to bring your arm, uh, bring the Null Ray Arm up. That was something that always bothered me going back to the classics uh, deluxe Seeker mold that they gave you these great missile launching Null Rays but uh, in terms of being able to move the arm with it, you always had that problem that it would always bump into uh, the uh, wings because they couldn't move back. But other than that, for robot mode, let's get into the transformation. And now the instructions do show you being able to do the transformation with the null rays attached. Um, I've had them pop off at various points. So if they do, I'm just going to leave it. The first thing you want to do is come in and open up the chest like Starscream is flashing you. And go ahead and open that all the way, fold it all the way back 
so that it's open up like that. And you're going to do, you, you want to do that side first and then come in and do the nose cone and the other side. And that is actually how you're supposed to do it because the nose cone section um, has a, more pegs to go in and kind of this overlaps. It's a whole security thing. Next, what you want to do is bring Starscream's head down. It's on a double hinge joint. So you just want to bring it out like this and then come in and around and start bringing the nose cone around and just bring that down sort of like it's in a uh, position like that. Next, what you want to do is bring the legs down at the hips and just to make sure you have enough space to rotate the wing and arms assembly around. around. It will soft friction into place for this for vehicle mode and then the other way in robot mode. Um, you can come in, uh, peg the legs together, and then as you bring them up, kind of finagle them that they will peg into the back of that wing section. Um, next, what you can do is coming underneath is you'll notice there are teeny tiny slots on the knees. Those are actually for the slots on the um, tabs on that uh, chest cavity. So what you want to do now is, again, close the section with the no fake nose cone up first. Make sure you get it over all the way because that's going to tab in in three different uh, slots, whereas the one on this side is only going to tab into one. And make sure you do audibly hear that click. That will help hold the legs together and secure uh, the wings. Uh, next, what you can do is finagle with keeping the head down, finagle the nose cone up into place just like so. And then finally, uh, for this section, rotate Starscream's head around. You can do that at any point. Bring it up and underneath, and it will just sit under the nose cone like that, helping to hold it into place. That section really doesn't tab in, but it holds well once you have everything lined up. And there is a little bit, there is a little bit of garbage there, but very nice. Uh, finally, well, we're getting towards the end. Uh, swivel up the blue tail fins. There's a tab that will hold it for robot mode, and then it will pop into place using that tab for vehicle mode. And then th flip out the other fin. Just do it again on this side. Snap, and there you go. Coming back underneath uh, Starscream, you want to rotate the forearm so that the... Uh, Whole, fist hole is facing towards Starscream, and you're going to bend it slightly on the elbow joint because that tab is there's a tab and a slot that's on an angle. So it will just do it like that, and we'll repeat it again on this side. And as you saw right there, the I was so close but the null ray came off in my hand i mean it does hold on very well it's just with all the fiddling and stuff it does tend to move but it is what it is and fit it up in there and there we go into oh, i did oh, i just couldn't did that section there so And just make sure you get everything paid in. Just like so. Oh, you know what? I just noticed. On this section, there's like slots and pegs that this actually does peg into place. So, yeah. This does this front section does peg into place. I never noticed that till now. Hey, we have both learned something together. Just make sure the head on star screams straight. But there you go. One thing I do find very interesting about the jet mode if you remember the voyager class starscream his cod piece waist covering had to be flipped forward to access the port to put starscream on a flight stand well this is the waist piece 
and in vehicle mode it kind of looks like it's flipped down as if it's mimicking that look from the Earthrise figure when you put it on a flight stand. I don't know if that's intentional or a happy accident, but either way, I think that's kind of cool. And really, again, fantastic uh, engineering involved. Great figure. Um, let me pause real quick and I'll bring in Skywarp so we can do a vehicle comparison. And here's Skywarp in vehicle mode, and you can see the differences between the classic Seeker design and a more modern design. Which is kind of funny that the more modern design is about five, six years old at this point. But you can see how this is the more modern jet, and you have the different things going on. And I just popped off another knoll right here. Sorry. That was because I, I uh, just knocked it off. I mean, just, I mean, these, I, I mean, I keep saying that they stay on well, but they keep popping off. It doesn't help that also I have big fat fingers that make it hard to uh, get them on. There we go. And, but you can see the differences. This has landing gear, this one doesn't. But, you know, this one we bought about three, four times, I think. No, I think about three times. It didn't get repainted past uh, Thundercracker. Um, this one, I don't know what's going to happen. I've heard rumors of a core class two-pack with Seekers. And who knows? They could do the cone heads. Um, I mean, retool the wings. And for the cone head, if you look at the bottom here, that's the robot head. They can make the cone the actual tip of the jet, but... Who knows? It's all rampant speculation at my part. So, that's about it for Starscream. Um, we're going to move on and take a look at Megatron. Okay, so here's Megatron. And I gotta tell you, I wasn't particularly looking forward to Megatron because I didn't like the fact that the tip of the barrel um, for tank mode is a separate piece. It's that... Uh, I'll just remove it now. We're going to have to remove it anyway. It's actually the mini gun version of Megatron, as we've all seen. But when you get into robot mode, there's really a cool place to put it that just completely changed my opinion of uh, this figure. Let me bring the turret down. Um, no treads. Megatron's peeking out underneath. And as you can see, there's the silver there that I was talking about that I thought would be more prevalent on... Uh, robot mode. Also, I do appreciate they worked in a rotating turret. That's something that's sometimes missing on tanks of a larger size. But to get into the transformation, if you haven't already, go ahead and remove um, that front gun piece. And what you're basically going to do is unhook the leg from the side, this rear panel piece, um, unsnap the inner knee joint from the thigh, rotate it down, snap it back into place quite loudly there, do it again on this side, there you have the legs, rotate the waist around, just like this. Now I do want to mention on mine, the hips came a little loose, as always, your mileage may vary. Uh, next what you want to do is come in underneath here and Rotate the front of the tank forward like that, and that will allow you to free up the arms. Lift up the um, forearm section here, and rotate the shoulders around, and they will they will peg into place just like so. Now with that done, come around the back, and this will just friction, and this will tab into place and click down over the shoulders like that. Final, finish the transformation on this arm, rotate it all the way around so that little um, peg was now facing inward, and you can reveal the fist, and on this arm, it's actually the wrist rotates, so you might want to Get in there, make your life a little easier, keep swiveling, and 
it reveals the mushroom cap, but it is a nice little touch how you do get some wrist articulation. Go ahead and rotate the fusion cannon down. This is, I want to say, like, um, like heavily pegged in, like a like a mushroom peg or something. You really can't remove it now. As we've seen in the um, preview picks, Megatron can hold this if he wants. But if you come around the back, there are two peg holes that you come in here, you can peg the gun into, and that will give him the over-the-shoulder barrel that the original G1 toy and animation design had. So while this is a tank Megatron, this is very close to... Uh, G, uh, G1 Megatron in terms of looks. And I did want to, I should mention, much like Optimus Prime's ion rifle, you have a 3mm peg and then a 5mm peg. So larger figures can hold uh, this, the Megatron gun if you want to have uh, some fun with it. So yeah, really cool, really nice look here. Um, in terms of articulation, um, the shoulder coverings are fixed, but there's a ball joint in the shoulder, ball joint at the elbow. Um, you do have the same articulation here, as well as that little bit of wrist articulation. Hips, knees on a ball joint, and much like Starscream, uh, Megatron's feet are molded in that A stance. And the head can swivel. I guess you can rotate it for vehicle mode if you so desire, but... Yeah, that one, there's a, you know, we saw there was a waist joint. Um, really, the big thing with, uh, these core class figures is that they're kind of meant to go with the ARC playset that's been not officially, officially announced. So there's that. But, um, we'll pause, and I'll be back with my final thoughts. Megatron and Starscream are a great set of figures. Like I said at the beginning, I wasn't going to be too keen on Megatron, but finding out that little um, storage trick with the handgun, which is mentioned in the instructions, really changed my opinion on this figure overall. Um, the head sculpt, of course, is very nice. I don't know if I'll go as far as to say it's the best G1 head sculpt we've gotten outside of the Siege and Earthrise figures, but it is very nice. Starscream is a dream. The engineering, again, fantastic. If you're going to buy one, go with Starscream. Then again, um, if you're not a fan of Starscream but want to experience the mold, you can take a chance and wait to see if that um, Core 2 pack really is the uh, Thundercracker and Skywarp or two of the other Seekers using this design. You can experience the mold without buying Starscream. Um, but definitely, both figures are solid, and I'm happy to have them. And I'm looking forward to displaying all the core figures in the arc, recreating scenes from um, the 35th, being the 35th anniversary of Transformers, the movie, as well as, you know, was it 37 years since uh, G1 debuted? So recreating scenes of the boarding of the arc, etc., etc. So that's about it for the review. Um, if you like this review, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. While the views are always appreciated, the liking, commenting, and subscribing communicates to YouTube's algorithms um, that my channel is special, is, it should be exalted, and held upon high. But if you really want to make the ultimate sign of support of my channel, please consider contributing to my Patreon. It's www.patreon.com slash chuckdog1999. No thrills, no tears, no special rewards. All I ask for is a dollar a month or $12 a year. It helps me help you, help me help you bring figures like this to you, as well as keeping up the infrastructure of the channel. But as I always say, if you can't do the dollar a month or $12 a year, your views are the ultimate sign of support. So, that's about it for your old, this your old pal Chuck. For Starscream and Megatron, we will see you next time.